and welcome to database management systems i'm javita christie and in this video i'm going to explain to you how to draw an er diagram using a tool called draw.io and this is a tool that can be used to create any kinds of um, unified modeling language diagrams but specifically it's good for er diagrams and you can use this to create diagrams and insert into projects of uh, database management systems. And ER diagrams can be easily drawn using pen and paper also. This is just a tool that allows you to create professional ER, ER diagrams. So let's get started with this tool. So as you can see, this tool is called draw.io, which is seen on top. And you can always save this diagram. So it is right now untitled diagram and you can save it and give it a name. We are going to create an employee's database today. So it's, an, it's a diagram for an employee's database and I'll explain it to you in a while. So this is how you save your file. You can write down the name of the file and select what type of file you want. So by default, it is the XML file, but you can name it anything you want. You can have it, a, have it as a PNG file, which makes it easier to copy paste into, into, into projects and documents. So this is what it looks like. And this is the, the, di uh, the diagram that we are going to create. And what you see on your screen right now is a schema diagram. So schema diagram is basically what a relational model looks like. And uh, you get to see all the primary keys and foreign keys in this. So uh, if you haven't already watched videos on relational model, then please go ahead and watch it. I have linked it down below and you will get to know what a primary key is and what a foreign key is. So this is basically a, a diagram that shows you what tables are there, what columns are there, what are the primary keys, what are the foreign keys and what are the connections between those. So I'll quickly explain it to you. So you have a table called employees. It contains columns, employee ID, first name, last name, debt code, and salary. And this is a primary key. And debt code is a foreign key. This is borrowed. Foreign key is always borrowed from another table. So this is borrowed from the departments table, which contains code, name, manager ID, and sub debt of. So this will tell you that this employee is part of this department. So it is taken from here. And departments table contains a manager ID. This is a foreign key and you can see the arrow going out. So this is taken from employees table, specifically the employee ID. So a manager is also an employee. So that's why it is taken from here. Then you have the sub debt of what this means is that this particular department, for example, department code five, is a sub department of the department one. So here you would write down in the table five and with that the sub depth of you will write down one. So this is borrowed from itself. So department is borrowing sub depth of from the code attribute of itself. So that's why the arrow goes here. Then you have the projects table and projects table contains project ID, depth code, description, start date and end date and revenue of the project. And here the project ID is the primary key and the foreign key is depth code, which is again borrowed from the departments table. So it lets you know that this project belongs to this department. And there is also a relation, a table called works on which connects a project with an employee. So you have a project ID connected with an employee ID, which tells you that this employee works on this project. And there's also assigned time, which tells you that this employee is assigned this much time on this particular project. Okay, so having settled all of that, now let's see what the diagram would actually look like. So first we will begin with uh, drawing the employee. And you can see that on the left hand side, there is a section for entity relation and it gives you all the symbols that you require. So there are special symbols for entity and I'm going to use one of those to create the employee's entity. So you can drag it anywhere on your screen and you can double click and write down employees. 
so it can be edited it's very easy to edit and once you have written um, uh, yeah it is employees so once you have written employees then you can go ahead and create the attributes if you remember all these attributes are noted down or shown as ellipses so you can get that those ellipses also from here and there's a special one for key so for key there is one given with an underline so that is the key attribute so you can use that to uh, for employee id so you can click on it and then it comes on your screen and you can double click and change it to employee id okay and then in a similar manner the rest of the attributes which are first name last name debt code and salary they can also be added by taking this simple attribute symbol so once you take that you can add that also so i'm just going to fast forward a bit and you can uh, increase or decrease the size of this also so you can increase the size decrease the size Another thing is that you can directly copy paste these attributes. You don't even have to um, create new ones every time. You can just copy paste some of these attributes, which makes it even more, even easier because you don't have to select one and resize it every time. So once all the attributes are done, you can drag them and place them anywhere. So I'm going to drag them to the top just because I require space to make the rest of the entities. So after dragging them, you can select the line from the general symbols and then use that to connect the attributes. So you can connect the attributes to the entity. It's very easy to do this using the line symbol already available to you. Okay, so in a similar way, we are going to connect everything here so you can copy paste the lines also that way they come to the location where you want them to a nearby location and next we can see the works on table now if you look at works on it's not actually going to be an entity because it contains very few attributes it contains only three attributes and two of those attributes are actually um, foreign keys so that way if you see you don't need to create an entity you can create a relationship for this so that's what I'm going to do also I'm going to create a relationship and for a relationship we require a rhombus which you can get from the entity relations uh, section so once you get the rhombus you can uh, just drag it to the position and afterwards you can rename it to works on so this is now renamed as works on and of course you can connect it and tilt it using that circle so you can use uh, the same kind of solid line that you used before and using that solid line you can connect it with employees and once that is done all you need to do is connect it to projects so first we need to create uh, the projects entity so for that i'm going to use the rectangle and double click and rename it projects and then i'm going to connect that to works on so it can be connected to works on So this is the basic diagram ready for you. And now we can have attributes. So I've just gone ahead and fast forwarded a little bit and added all the attributes. You know how to do it as I showed it to you for employees. So all the attributes of projects are ready. And then all you need to do is now connect them with lines, not that type of a line, a solid line which I've copied. So you can connect all of those with solid lines to projects. The placement of the attributes 
doesn't really matter. You can place them anywhere you want. They just have to be close enough to projects to be connected. And now the assigned time attribute of works on, that is remaining. And what would you do with it? You cannot put it in entities. You have to put it in the relation. And this, this is a special attribute, which is called a descriptive attribute that gets attached to a relation instead of an entity. So for that, you need to use a dashed line instead of a solid line. Like you have used solid lines for other attributes. You cannot use a solid line for an attribute that belongs to a relationship. So you have to use a dashed line, which you can see right there, dashed line in the general symbols. So you need an attribute. So I'll just copy one of the attributes available. And then you can double click on it and write down assigned time because that is the attribute we want. And then once it's ready, you can go ahead and select a dashed line from the general symbols. So once you've taken the dashed line, you can drag it over there and attach assigned time with works on. So that is our descriptive attribute ready. Now the next table that we need to show is the departments table, or in this case, it's an entity. So we are creating that entity, naming it departments, Okay, and then we go ahead and see all the attributes. So we have a code attribute for departments, which we are going to write here. This is a primary key. So for the departments, that is a primary key. Sorry. Yeah, so code is a primary key. So there's an underline and then there's a name of the department and the manager ID of the department, which is created. And next we go ahead and connect all those attributes. Once they are connected, now I would like to talk about the sub depth of, which I explained to you in the beginning of the video. So sub depth of is actually forming a recursive relationship with departments. So it is not, going to be shown as an attribute in the ER model, but it will be shown as a recursive relationship. So that's what it looks like here. We are going to show it as a recursive relationship. So it's directly shown in this manner as a rhombus and you will write down sub depth of and attach two lines from departments to sub depth of. So that is what a recursive relationship looks like. And you can see there's departments, all the attributes are covered. You just need to now connect it. It is connected to projects as well as to employees. So you have to connect it to both. But remember that you cannot connect an entity with an entity. You can only connect an entity with another entity using a rhombus that is a relationship set. So many people try to do that, but you cannot do that. You have to connect it using a rhombus. So we are going to do just that now. We are going to use a rhombus to connect employees and departments and projects and departments. Now the thing is, if you have an employee, then you would want that employee. Now this is completely on, a, uh, on an assumption basis. It's not required, but I'm assuming that every employee would belong to a department. So that is what forms a total participation of employees. Okay. And also I'm changing that line over there and creating this type of a double line because I feel that every employee should be working on some project. So that's why total participation of employees. And you can create a total participation for projects too because all the projects would be worked on by some or the other employee. So you can have a double line for projects also. This is an assumption basis. Whenever people are asked to create an ER diagram. There is nothing that says that this is the correct diagram and this is the incorrect one. It is. It depends on your perception and the design that you want to create. So it's not necessary to have a correct one and an incorrect one. You can create it the way you want. 
So even in exams, when students create ER diagrams, they are judged on the basis of their design and not on the basis of a predefined correct model. There is no such thing. Okay. So now you have a, a relationship set. Now this is not shown in the schema, but I'm going to create it because I cannot connect employees and departments with each other otherwise. So I have to create a relationship called belongs to. What this will do is it will connect employee ID with the given depth code. So you can go ahead and connect it like this. So again, there, there are double lines showing that every employee belongs to some department. So total participation. And then you can connect departments with this relationship called belongs to. So again, I'm going to copy those uh, double lines and drag them over there. So again, this shows that every department contains some employees. So it is associated with some employee and that's why there's a double line again. So this is almost done. You just need to connect now projects with departments. So I, I've created another relationship here, a relationship set. And again, I'm going to name it whatever I want because this was not given in the schema diagram. So you can name it whatever you want and it's compulsory to have a relationship. So I have to name it in this manner. So I have project or I, uh, it can be read as departments. Department has a project. So that's the relationship. And then it is connected using double lines from project because every project belongs to some department, but every department doesn't necessarily have a project. So this is not a double line. So this is what it looks like. This is my final diagram. And once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and save it. So in order to save it, and remember all the relations here are many to many. So cardinality is many to many everywhere. So you can click on that button that says unsaved changes, click here to save. So once you do that, it prompts you and you can see I had already named it employees. So it is saved like that and you can click on save and it's downloaded and you can show it in the folder or you can directly open it from there and I'm going to open it here. So you can see now that uh, it'll open in a while. So this is the final diagram that is created and this you can copy paste into your projects on your documents wherever you want. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.